Maybe you first noticed it on the opening splash screen of your favourite game. Or maybe you heard someone gushing about the upcoming demonstration of photorealistic graphics. Few names resonate as powerful in game developers as Unreal Engine. What started as a humble tool to power Tim Sweeney's 1998 game, Unreal Engine has blossomed into the de facto platform for building many of the most popular games today. In today's video, we will be going over the evolution of Unreal Engine from 1998 to where we are today. Let's have a brief recap. In the 1990s, before third-party game engines like Unreal Engine were common, most game developers would need to write their own from complete scratch. While the hardware and games of this time were much simpler than they are today, this still served as a major barrier to entry. With the rise of 3D graphics and the explosive popularity of games like id Software's Doom and Quake, the developers at id Software began licensing their core software of their game engine to others. People could make their own graphics, characters, weapons and write their own stories before transplanting them on top of the core of the Doom engine or the Quake engine and have a fully functional game. It was at this time that Epic Games released Unreal, which quickly became a mega hit, generating interest for the engine on which the game had been built. Now, let's go through the evolution of Unreal Engine. Unreal Engine 1 Developed over the course of three and a half years, Unreal Engine 1 boasted a robust renderer offering advanced lighting and shading effects. Initially built as a software renderer that ran on the CPU, the engine was quickly iterated upon to take advantage of the rapidly growing GPU market and soon had support for the major APIs of the time. 3D FX Glide, Microsoft Direct 3D, and Silicon Graphics OpenGL. Designed from the ground up to be a flexible, multi-generational engine that could be improved upon over time, Epic Games found quick success in licensing their tech out to others. Its modular architecture allowed for easier customization and expansion, empowering developers to create diverse gaming experiences. Critically and commercially successful games like Deuce X were built using Unreal Engine 1, enhancing its reputation in the industry. Another huge component of the success was unlike id Software, who only offered their engine source code, Epic provided support for licenses and would get together with their leads to discuss improvements to its game's development. Internally, this team was dubbed Unreal Engine's Tech Advisory Group. Unreal Engine 2 Building on the success of its predecessor, Unreal Engine 2 made its debut in 2002, upping the ante in every way. Unreal Engine 2 added support for large-scale terrain while simultaneously improving the texture and model quality to such an extent that it was nearly 100 times more detailed than Unreal Engine 1. The addition of the Karma Physics engine improved realism for both characters and hard body objects like vehicles. The cinematic editing tool allowed creators to make intricate cutscenes and a character's skeletal animation could be powered by motion capture. Unlike the 90s, where a game engine was only suitable for making games that looked like clones of the original, Unreal Engine 2 allowed people to make games that looked nothing alike, encouraging greater diversity in the marketplace and making Unreal Engine 2 more appealing to a wide variety of developers. Unreal Engine 2 was another huge success and was the platform on which legendary games like Bioshock, Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell and Unreal Engine Tournament 2003 were built. Unreal Engine 3 Unveiled in 2004, with the first games using it published in 2006, Unreal Engine 3 marked another paradigm shift for the industry, supporting both Windows and game consoles. Unreal Engine 3 moved away from the fixed function pipeline of Unreal Engine 2 to take advantage of fully programmable shaders. Long story short, shaders allow game developers to take advantage of the massive parallelization power of GPUs to display extensively detailed objects in video games whilst running in real time at 60 frames per second or greater. Unreal Engine 3 was upgraded with new features over nearly a decade of development and by the end of its life had become an incredibly powerful and feature-rich engine. It introduced soft edge motion blur and bokeh depth of field for more cinematic visuals. Shadows, lighting and reflections were a big focus that saw several updates to improve fidelity. Destructible environment support was improved as was the ability to perform large crowd simulations and render foliage more realistically. The Kismet visual scripting system was introduced, allowing developers to visualize and design complex game mechanics without extensive coding. 
A free version of Unreal Engine 3 called the Unreal Engine Development Kit was released in 2009 for the general public to benefit students, hobbyists and digital filmmakers and receive millions of downloads. Android and iOS support was also added in 2010, allowing Epic to tap into the gigantic smartphone video game market. Some of the biggest games on Unreal Engine 3 include Gears of War, Mass Effect, Borderlands 2 and Mortal Kombat 11. Rocksteady's Arkham Knight, one of the best looking games from this period and one that still holds up visually today was also developed on a modified version of Unreal Engine 3. Unreal Engine 4 With games relentlessly growing in ambition, development timelines and costs began to explode, making it difficult for Epic's competitors to keep up with the capital and manpower required to stay competitive. Id Tech and CryEngine fell to the wayside, leaving the third-party game engine market firmly in the hands of Unreal Engine and Unity. To maintain their lead, Epic continued investing in their tech and in 2014 released Unreal Engine 4 at the annual Game Developers Conference GDC. Revamping their licensing model from a flat fee, Epic initially announced a subscription model with a monthly fee of $19 before eventually making the engine free to use. Developers would get full access to the engine and all of its features. Once a game was released, the developers would owe a 5% royalty on the game's revenue if the game had made more than $1 million in its lifetime gross revenue. Tim Sweeney revealed in an interview that this change made the use of Unreal Engine 4 grow by over 10 times. In addition to the new business model, Unreal Engine 4 featured a whole host of other improvements. One of the most impactful in terms of the visuals was the introduction of physically based rendering, or PBR, which seeks to emulate the way materials look and react to light in the real world. Complex subsurface scattering, degree of reflection, and diffusion of light are taken into account to represent objects with photorealism. The Kismet visual scripting system from Unreal Engine 3 was replaced with blueprints, making it more powerful and intuitive, allowing technical artists, designers, and programmers to collaborate more closely. Other features include GPU particle simulation, temporal anti-analyzing, improvements to the landscape terrain editor, and better handling of HDR. Before releasing Fortnite's Battle Royale mode in 2017, Epic also made improvements that allowed Unreal Engine 4 to excel at handling large worlds and player counts on a single server, unlocking new gameplay experiences. Unreal Engine 4 also embraced virtual and augmented reality by adding functionality and tools for creating those experiences as well as supporting various platforms such as the Oculus, PlayStation VR, Magic Leap and HoloLens. The number of titles published with Unreal Engine continue to grow this generation, including some of the best-selling games of all time like Fortnite and PlayerUnknown's Battleground. Unreal Engine 5, first unveiled in 2020 and released in 2022, represents the pinnacle of Epic's commitment to pushing the boundaries of what's possible in game development. UE5 introduced several revolutionary technologies starting with Nanite and Lumen. Nanite allows artists to import high quality assets into Unreal and automatically handles their level of detail, also known as LOD. LOD is a system where the further the player is from an object, the less detailed the object becomes. This was always done by having artists make higher and lower quality versions of a single asset that are swapped between each other depending on the distance from the player. To create different quality versions of every asset in a game was an enormous amount of work. Work that can be eliminated thanks to Nanite. Lumen, on the other hand, uses a version of ray tracing to offer dynamic global illumination in real time. This technology enables light to bounce, reflect, and realistically create shadows, greatly enhancing the overall visual fidelity of a game. Light is also able to react realistically to changes in the world, allowing game developers to make more interactive and destructible objects and environments, such as the 2023 team-based shooter The Finals. The MetaHuman Creator, a recent addition to Unreal Engine 5, is a major advancement in character creation. This tool enables developers to generate highly realistic and customizable digital humans, streamlining the character design process and raising the bar for in-game character fidelity. MetaHuman Animator speeds up the process of generating high fidelity facial animations for these characters. Something as simple as an iPhone camera can capture an actor's performance which can then be transferred onto the character. 
I also made a tutorial about this, I'll put it somewhere on the screen now if you want to learn how to do that. This process reduces to minutes, something that would have taken weeks or even months. With the visual fidelity of the experiences crafted in Unreal Engine 5 now approaching functional photorealism, the engine is not only being used for video games, but also in film and TV production. Environments created in Unreal Engine 5 can be projected onto LED screens in a film studio, replacing what was once known as green and blue screens. For example, I know the Mandalorian used Unreal Engine and LED screens to record some scenes. And with Unreal Engine 5, they are always updating it. In Unreal Engine 5.2, they announced the procedural content generation framework. This cutting edge feature brings the power of procedural generation directly into Unreal Engine. With the PCG tools, developers can efficiently populate large-scale environments with Unreal assets, streamlining the process of world creation. What's more, its runtime component ensures that these dynamic worlds can adapt to gameplay changes in real time, promising immersive experiences for players. Awesome games have already been released in Unreal Engine 5, including Robocop, Rogue City, Tekken 8, Power World, and Bobo's Fun Zone, a game I'm making. I had to do a cheeky plug. From its inception in the late 1990s to cutting edge Unreal Engine 5 of today, each iteration of Unreal Engine has shaped the gaming industry. As we look forward to the future, it's exciting to imagine the continued impact Unreal Engine will have in years to come. And if you want to learn how to create full games inside of Unreal Engine, like 2D platformers, FPS games, melee combat systems, and more, make sure to check out my website, Unreal Engine University. I have a bunch of courses there, which will teach you how to use Unreal Engine. And I even have a free Unreal Engine beginner course, which will get you started with Unreal Engine if you've never used it before. That's all for this video. If you enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.